You have probably created blue crystals of hydrated copper 2 sulfate by reacting sulfuric acid with copper oxide. When copper 2 sulfate crystallizes, it bonds to molecules of water. This is called hydrated copper sulfate. If you heat the blue crystals, they turn to a white powder. This is anhydrous copper sulfate and is formed because the water from the crystals has been evaporated. This is an example of a reversible reaction because if you add water to anhydrous copper sulfate, it will turn blue as the hydrated form is made. You can carry out an investigation to calculate the percentage of water in hydrated copper sulfate. In order to do this, you will need to heat the hydrated copper sulfate over a Bunsen burner using a piece of equipment called a crucible. These are small dishes made from porcelain or metal. The metal ones are safer to use because there is less risk of them cracking. Record the mass of an empty crucible. You will need to use balances that measure mass at least to the nearest 0.1 gram, but to the nearest 0.01 gram is better. Remember to tear or zero the balance before you use it. Then you need to add six spatulas of copper sulfate and record the new mass. The crucible needs to be placed on a pipe clay triangle and heated on a tripod with a blue Bunsen burner flame for several minutes. The pipe clay triangle is a piece of equipment used to hold the crucible on the tripod. You need the flame to be as hot as possible so you hear a roaring noise. Make sure the air hole on the side of the Bunsen is fully open to achieve this. Carefully observe the solid, making sure you wear eye protection, and keep heating until the solid has completely changed from blue to white. Avoid overheating, which may cause the copper sulfate to break down and form toxic or corrosive fumes. A total heating time of about 10 minutes should be enough. Allow the equipment to fully cool and then record the final mass of the crucible. To speed up the cooling of the crucible, you can use tongs to carefully remove it from the tripod and place it on a heat-proof mat. However, you should always listen to your teacher first, as they may prefer you to wait for it to cool before you handle it. You will have some results that give you the mass of the crucible, the mass of the crucible plus hydrated copper sulphate, and the mass of the crucible plus anhydrous copper sulphate. You will then need to do some calculations. First, work out the mass of the hydrated copper sulphate you heated. For this example, it is calculated as 124.2 minus 122.1 equals 2.1 grams. Then calculate the mass of anhydrous copper sulfate. This is 123.4 minus 122.1 equals 1.3 grams. Consequently, the mass of water in the hydrated copper sulfate must be 2.1 minus 1.3 equals 0.8 grams. Finally, to calculate the percentage of water in the hydrated copper sulfate, you need to do this calculation the mass of water divided by mass of hydrated copper sulphate, multiplied by 100. The answer is 38.1%. For higher tier students, you may want to calculate how many molecules of water are joined to each molecule of hydrated copper sulphate. The formula of hydrated copper sulphate is known as CuSO4.xH2O. The X refers to the unknown number of water molecules. First, calculate the number of moles of anhydrous copper sulphate. Remember, moles is equal to mass divided by relative formula mass. Using the same data as before, this is 1.3 grams of copper sulphate divided by the relative formula mass of copper sulphate, which is 159.5. Next, you need to work out the moles of water that evaporated. The relative formula mass of water is 18. So this calculation is 0.8 divided by 18. The final step is to calculate the ratio of copper sulphate molecules to water molecules. So, there are approximately 5 molecules of water to every 1 molecule of copper sulphate. The formula is CuSO4.5H2O.